Hey, aloha and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another episode of Security Matters Hawaii. Today we're going to be talking with Don Erickson. He's fresh off of a vacation and I got him pegged down in his office for this episode and we're going to talk about all the things happening uh, that the Security Industry Association is doing across the spectrum of the industry and it's really gotten broad. Don, thanks so much for joining me. I know you're, you're busy back from vacation. I'm sure your inbox is full, so I appreciate you taking the time to join us in the studio today. No, Andrew, I would do anything for you and your company. You know that. I'm thrilled to be here, and you're one of my favorite members. So we're going to have a fun time today. Awesome. Thanks so much. So, I I mean, C is just growing, and it, they're like everywhere these days. So let's, let's start with the show. I've been going to ISC for 20-something years. I, I don't know if you've got the numbers back yet, but I think this was one of the biggest shows I recall. It seemed so busy Andrew, I, everywhere. I, I agree with you. I've been there about 13 years, ISC West. We had 30,000 people attend this year. About uh, 18,000 were attendees themselves. The rest were exhibitors. It was incredible. I mean, I think it was, in my opinion, really a barometer of the health of the industry. I mean, when you look at the, the PAC networking events, the CN New Product Showcase, and the innovation we saw from all the products that were entered, from the new exhibitors and what they were offering and from the reinvestment from exhibit existing exhibitors it was incredible and the aisles were full there was a buzz throughout the industry the industry is doing really well i know we talked offline right before the start of the show how well your company is doing which is great and we're hearing that from a vast majority of our thousand companies that we represent um, the majority of whom are, are small and, and medium-sized companies and that makes me feel really good that the industry is doing so strong and continues to be so relevant. Yeah, let's let's talk about the showcase. Now, I'm, I saw some of the products from the showcase. Is that a, um, are, are you a judge? I know there are, there are several judges. Uh, tell us a little bit about what was exciting in there. Yeah, so Andrew, we had, uh, this is about our 30th, the 35th year of running the CNN mm -hmm. product showcase. We had dozens of products entered from intrusion to wireless technologies, to artificial intelligence, to RFID and biometrics. And it was a cross section of really what's new in the marketplace. In terms of what's being judged uh, and who the judges are, they're integrators, they're peers of yours, and, and they're security consultants. So we don't have manufacturers participate as judges, and that gives the program more integrity. But the NPS program is really the first place each year that we see new product enter the, enter the marketplace. And where I'm really excited are the products we're seeing relate, that are leveraging AI, and analytics, uh, I think that's really cool. It's going to have an impact in various markets. Um, I think the one top of mind for me is probably the K through 12 market and mm -hmm. what AI could do for the for that community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a community that, that uh, I know we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of the funding and some of the activities that you've done uh, with the government to bring funding into that sector. So it's really been important. Right. Um, the, other, uh, the other thing that I, I thought was interesting, and I don't recall it ever being so prevalent, is the the off show, off floor shows and exhibits, all of the hallways um, were full and there's large folks there now like Intel is coming around our industry. And I don't recall, you know, the, the greater technology sector paying as much attention to security as they seem to be doing today. Are you getting that feeling as well? We're, we're seeing that from Intel and obviously from Google and Microsoft and Dell. Companies that have not been traditional physical security companies are getting into the space. But what the beauty of ISC West was, you see the convergence of IT security and drones and robotics, and really each component of the ecosystems represented at the show. Uh, this whole convergence theme that's been talked about for, for so long is really becoming a reality. And it's, and it's on display at the show. And, and that's what's attracted so many integrators and end users to ISC West, probably the largest numbers uh, Andrew, that we're talking about that we've we've seen in years. And one thing I want to point out, now I've already told your audience you're one of my favorite members, but you're also one of my favorite speakers. <laughs> and so your session at ISC West was literally the second highest ranked session uh, in terms of attendance that we had at the show. And I got to tell you, the the session that was ranked first, we're not going to have them back because I want to help you get to the number one position. <laughs> but I appreciate being a part of it. So your session was on fiscal cyber convergence, really good a topic and extremely relevant to the industry. And you've, uh, to your credit, really been an evangelist on that topic through your involvement with PSA Tech as well as CIA and ISC West. So that's much appreciated to have your thought leadership 
Mark. Yeah, I think uh, Bill Vollen told me into that about, I think Christine actually volunteered me and then Bill got me, got me hooked in and that's been, I've learned a lot along the way. I mean, you know, one of my models is always be learning, always be sharing. So I'm happy to give that back. I, I was surprised at the education section because the Tuesdays are always usually really full. We had a few hundred, like standing room only in that one. But on Thursday, I still had another hundred plus in that one, which was typically there's less people later in the week because the show's open and people are busy. But it was right. it was back to back appointments, uh, education. Uh, I, we had customers there like, more than we've ever had. I mean, it was I, I worked very hard. And typically, I have Don't a little. Did you feel really good about it? I mean, there's probably not been a time in recent memory where you feel really good about this industry. Yeah, right? yeah. Christine and I walked away going, "Wow, we have not worked the show that hard that we could recall, where it was just back to back to back." And I missed some of my favorite things. Like I didn't even get to interop this year, which is one of my favorite sessions of all, and I didn't get to go, and because uh, we were just had appointments with customers, and so it was amazing. Well, then you had a great meeting with GSA, right? So we had a significant government presence at the show as well. That's important for your company, a lot of security companies. And I think for your audience, I mean, people in Hawaii and just around the country and in fact, the world, what's important to realize is that this is an industry that's representing every single component of critical infrastructure mm -hmm. from schools to ports, to airports, to government buildings. Think about that mission. It's unbelievable. And to be at an event with individuals that are committed to that mission, to your point about sharing knowledge, is really mm -hmm. a unique experience. So con continue to encourage people to be a part of it. Now, Andrew, one thing I want to add about the education, we had 85 sessions. Wow. And they range from active shooter to workplace violence to your topic on, on fiscal IT convergence. Um, the breadth of issues we're covering is really significant and substantial. And it shows the number of issues that are impact our industry. But it shows that we have the most innovative companies that are there to be trusted advisors to help end users solve the problems that in each of these verticals uh, that we're talking about. And um, I really can't say enough about it. So uh, I appreciate your involvement. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I work also with uh, InfraGuard. So it was, it was really good to see DHS there, uh, especially the S&T uh, session for the, uh, um, from, um, he wasn't from DARPA, he was from DHS, right? The, the science, the right. science and technology director, right? So our acting director, um, he spoke directly to what our industry's doing and what we're about. And I, from the InfraGuard, I work, you know, I work specifically in the defense industrial based sector, but the stuff that he talked about and the stuff that our industry is doing for the, for the, the remainder of the critical infrastructure sectors out there is a really big concern to the country, to the safety and security of the country. And I thought, he was in the right place at the right time. So I was really glad that we had that kind of representation. And I think he reinforced for everyone in that room why they're dedicated to this industry, why it's important, and, and how government wants to share and help our industry grow, our technologies improve. Um, what, what, what was your take on getting him in there? Because I don't recall government sort of being there, you know? So that was uh, Jake Parker on our government relations team, who you know, who does an unbelievable yeah. job. He was involved with GSA. It was Jake's relationships that helped bring DHS into the meeting. And that's a relationship we've cultivated over the last five, six, seven years. And what was really cool about it, Andrew, that the entire DHS team from ST toured the exhibit show yeah. floor. Yeah, they were they there. They actually went out. Um, yeah, absolutely. They took the time to learn about the technologies and build relationships, another value add uh, for the show itself. So it was really great. If I could pivot to something real quick that's related sure. to what we're talking about that may be of interest to, to your audience. You know, we're talking about critical infrastructure a lot and who the suppliers are that serve the operators of critical infrastructure, most of which is, as we know, privately owned. There's a lot of talk, and you alluded to this in, in, in Washington, there's a lot of talk right now about what the next stimulus bill may look like. And that has mm. an impact on your company and the customers you serve and, and so forth. So that's something we're really tracking because if you go around Hawaii or really any state, think about it for a minute. The number of bridges, roads, airports, schools, components of critical infrastructure that are outdated, old infrastructure, need to, new construction. What's going on right now in D.C. in one of the rare examples of bipartisanship is the Trump administration has begun to talk to Democrats and the majority in Congress about how do we come together and pay for a really robust, significant infrastructure package that's going to result primarily in reconstruction, but indirectly in additional security 
and, and life safety investments made within the infrastructure. And most importantly, it's going to create jobs for your listeners. So I think it's a great opportunity for your audience and for your partners and for your end users and for the supplier community to think about, about, you know, where do we invest? How do we prioritize? What are the soft targets? And, and how much money is appropriate to invest? So I think it's an exciting time to, to be in D.C. and hopefully really see this feeling of bipartisanship, bipartisanship come through. Yeah, I, for one, hope, I, I, I believe that Hawaii sort of waits around for that stimulus to occur. We've gotten, um, we rank regularly at the very bottom for, for roads and for infrastructure improvement. Um, the state just doesn't take care of those things very well here. And I, I don't know, you know, what the, the feelings are in the other states, but we've got um, aged infrastructure across all the islands out here, and that needs to be worked on. Of course, there's the, the DOD work that goes on out here as well. So there's always the refurbishment of the bases, improvement of those types of things, and there's other funding for that. I don't know if you, um, do you intersect at all with the Military Affairs Council that comes out from Hawaii to, uh, to work with um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 I guess it's the defense would be the defense sort of funding folks up there in D.C. that the Military Affairs Council from Hawaii goes out because um, we have such a large component here. Um, uh, so to I guess to track the funding and the projects that are really going to get funded uh, in Hawaii for the DOD. And I don't know if I don't know if you run so across them or not. No, I haven't run across that group, but we do fund, we do advocate for funding for security on military bases and military installations which is an important area. Obviously, you know, I have a lot of respect. You served in the military, appreciate your service. I think a top priority for our industry, probably in large part because we have so many members, former members of the military who are now part of our industry, is to, is to give back and support military, military installations to the extent that they have the most up-to-date infrastructure that includes security investment. So I look forward to working with them. But to answer your question, we, we do advocate for security installations at, at military uh, basis. Yeah, there's and there's definitely um, a, a lot of work, you know, headed our way in Hawaii. There's we're not, we're not seeing a slowdown for for many, many years in that particular component. Um, I think it's probably a good spot for a break. Uh, we got to pay some bills. So we take about a one minute and we'll be right back with Don Erickson. Sounds great. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines. And it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're talking with Don Erickson of SIA. Uh, we were kind of going over what's happened at this show. We're talking a little bit about what's happening with government. And Don, um, there's another place SIA started showing up. SIA there. All these cities all around the country hosting these evening events. How, are you getting to all of those yourself or how's that working out? <laughs> you know, Andrew, I want to see you at more of those. But in any case, SIA there is a networking event we have around the country. Hopefully we're going to bring to Hawaii as well. Yeah. Um, hopefully sponsored by Integrate Security Technologies, right? There you but, go. Um, but but it's a pure networking event, so there are no PowerPoints involved. It's an opportunity to meet current and prospective business partners as well as customers. And the value of the, the program is that it's intimate in its nature. So as much value as we get out of large-scale events like ISC West, which is the best, the small intimate events complement those larger events. And it's it provides for attendees very unique networking. So this year, Andrew, we're going to bring the program to about 13 cities. Wow. Uh, we'd, love to, we'd love to have some of your partners and attendees be there and customers um, and enjoy, enjoy the experience. 
Awesome. Yeah. I, uh, well, if we can get one Honolulu and if I'm on the mainland, I'm always tracking what's going on. So Christine and I show up here and there for sure. Um, let's talk about the women's event. So we've got, you know, of course, I'm a woman owned company, as you know, and we have right. um, women in industry, women across the spectrum of industries and businesses in the, in the country finally starting to get their due. We're not at a 50 50 yet where we need to get to for sure. But um, Great event, see a women's event at um, ISC West a few weeks ago. Excellent, excellent. I don't know, was that a, a kickoff for the group? Or, because I think it had no, already so started. Had, the group started several months ago. Okay. And we have an incredible steering committee that's that's developed the programs for it. What that was on the Friday of ISC West was a standing room only audience yeah. to hear a keynote speaker that inspired everybody, including myself, including all the women in the room, but a lot of gentlemen around the room as well, talking about her experience as a, as a working as a mom who has built an incredible career, including being as an serving as an advisor to the president of the United States. And as I mentioned, we had over 200 people standing room only. This is this is indicative of the type of events that we produce through the CEO Women in Security Forum. But Andrew, I agree with you. I mean, as a dad who has an incredible daughter is 12 years old, Meredith, as well as two sons, married to, like you, an incredibly accomplished woman, a, a business person like I am as well, there's much more we can do. And it's incredibly important for men to be involved in these initiatives yeah. and, and sh show their support and help them grow. Uh, you're right. Um, we, we haven't made enough progress. Uh, it's The numbers are still too low. We've got a long way to go. It's not a new problem, but we got to keep got to keep chipping at it, right? We got to really yeah. show some passion around it and get other organizations such as PSA involved among others. But let me talk about diversity a step further. Okay. So diversity for women is extremely important. And, and, and you practice that within your own business. And we try to do it at SEA itself with a very diverse team, but also it involves uh, men and women of color, right? So yeah. diversity extends beyond, beyond women and I had the pleasure recently of speaking at the International Association of Black Security Executives meeting. And Andrew, I have never walked into a meeting of 80 people that was as energetic as this particular meeting. The conversations were free flowing. We didn't cut off conversation. Incredible people, a lot of college students there who are interested in the security industry, could be future employees of yours or, or, or any supplier listening today. But we've got to also do more with the, the community involving uh, men and women of color. And yeah. hopefully we'll expand our diversity program to, to include them. And I also want to tip my hat to you because this ties into the whole issue of promoting the industry to non-traditional audiences. So we're talking about women. We're talking about men and women of color. But you've been really essential in our efforts to uh, promote our industry to non-traditional audiences so we can compete with the Googles and the Silicon Valleys and make this really, you know, a, 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 as you said earlier, a, a, a sexier industry to be attracted to. Because as we've talked about in this conversation, think about what you're doing as a company. I'm inspired by that. And I'm inspired by all these thousand companies about you're protecting my family, you're protecting my friends, you're protecting people traveling all over the world. And, and we all should be motivated by that. And But we have a challenge to attract college students and people from vocational schools in particular, as well as community colleges into the industry. So with your help and guidance, which was essential, we've identified three ways we're gonna do that by working with other organizations such as the Electronic Security Association, mm -hmm. and hopefully PSA, is we're gonna promote the industry better. We're gonna work with our media partners across the country, including local news outlets, including public television, and talk about the merits of working with the industry. Second, we're going to conduct research in terms of what the demand for jobs are. When we go out and talk to colleges and universities, they say, look, Don, it's great. You're telling me that Andrew's company is going to hire how many jobs? You're telling me other companies are going to hire in what positions? We've got to do a better job of communicating about that. Mm -hmm. and, and then last, we've got to provide more technical education for various positions. And if we do all those three things, I think we're going to see this industry grow. And we're going to, as an incredibly innovative industry, we're going to blow the top off. This is going to be the most appealing industry in the world if we can accomplish those those goals and we'll get young people involved. We'll get more engineers involved, more project managers involved, but with a diverse background. And that's going to be really exciting. And that's what keeps me motivated every day. Yeah, I, I, I share that. I um, just in the last week, I spoke to a group of uh, retiring um, Air Force Guard veterans 
Um, all of them with uh, avionics technical experience, all of them with a lot of leadership, you know, 20 plus years, had a group of about 14, uh, selling them not, not just on security, but on the low voltage industries. I told them, you know, AVs, AVs a little sexier than security, right? Because they get the, the great screens and the great sounds and everybody goes, ooh, you know, when the security works, everybody right. goes, oh, great, thank you. But we are protecting lives and protecting business. We, we all, I think, have a a, an ethical binding to our industry. Um, but in the same week, I also spoke to Hacker High School. So that's a group um, that runs, it's a global group. I was at a, with a group of uh, seniors graduating from Milani High School. Some of them want to go work, you know, for the NSA. Some of them want to work in cyber, but they were completely unaware of the low voltage industries and the on ramp that we have to technology and to technology professions. And so I got to talk, well, first we did some hacking, you know, hack some security law, showed them how to get around some circuits with magnets and things like that. And then we got to, I got to pitch our industry a little bit. And so um, I'm, I'm expecting a few emails or phone calls from that group. They're, they're young folks, they're ready to work. And, um, you know, not all of them are necessarily college bound. So, you know, they can look at our industry as sort of that trade, but we have a unique opportunity to get folks start them off with really no experience whatsoever. And if they can, you know, teach them to use hand tools, teach them how to move around, how to run wire, and ultimately start to configure and program and then project management or sales or whatever it may be. And beyond integrators, we have a whole group of manufacturers that are doing some of the most advanced R&D in the, in the world, I think, right now, especially with machine learning and some of the stuff that we're doing. I, I don't see an end to careers in our industry. I mean, no, absolutely. And, you, and the important thing is you don't have to be a technical expert, right? No. As you talk about, you could be in human resources, you could be in project management, you could be in sales, yeah. be, you know, any of these positions. I think um, the important thing is what I've learned about, and you know this from all the extensive outreach you do at colleges and universities, it's the mission, right? Yeah. And I think the college, high school students, college students, they can get behind this mission if they knew more about it. Yeah. And, and that's the challenge we have as an organization. And and as an industry, just continue to promote that. And I think I think shows like this that are watched by so many people uh, through social media and otherwise really goes a long way to to accomplish that. So I'm I'm really glad to be a part of it. Well, I hope so. Let's let's talk about. I think your on ramp is Accelerize. So Sia started Accelerize a few years ago. I think Brandon. I remember Brandon from Northland. Brandon McFall maybe was running that. How's that, how's that program going? Andrew, it's really taken off. We're, we're launching a new event in Minneapolis that I know you're going to send some folks to and your listeners will be there. We're having Accelerize, which is part of our Rise Young Professional program. Okay. So we feel an obligation to give young people a step up in the industry, right? And provide them with the tools and the mentoring and the resources that are going to help them be extremely successful one day and hopefully own their own companies if that's what they want to do or be the head of engineering if that's what they chose to do. So Accelerize is an event that'll be in Minneapolis in mid-August, and it's going to be a professional development conference, purposely intimate, involved, designed by young people for young people wow. about the security industry. So on, on the one hand, it's going to provide basic knowledge, security 101, if you will, about the security industry, the entire ecosystem, who is an integrator, who's a manufacturer, how do you get to market, what are the common technologies, as well as some soft skills training. So how do you work with a team? I mean, how do you have difficult difficult conversations with sure. your boss? How do you handle constructive feedback? So uh, all of these things are really important. So the blended learning of soft skills development with knowledge of the industry, I think makes for uh, an incredible event. And if it's any indication of how our women in security events going, this one's gonna be phenomenal as well. Yeah, and I, I do think it's important for the, the the senior folks in our industries. I used to, I still talk about in many rooms when you go to a lot of our conferences, and it's changing. But it used to look like a room full of bowling balls. They got all these bald headed guys with goatees, right? They're ex -mil ex military, ex police, whatever. And we're starting to see that change. But we, I think we that have been around the industry have got to provide mentorship for those young folks because it is in some ways who you know you know or knowing how to get the answer that you need or from who it may be in that particular sector or with that particular experience with a certain type of project or a certain vertical or a certain product or whatever it may be and that's the the breadth of our of the knowledge in our industry is kind of hard to wrap your arms around when you're first getting started and maybe that some of the mentorship stuff that we can do could help folks um you know get there a little quicker exactly 
Yeah, so is, um, are you taking that also to, uh, are you going to pull from government? Is, is DHS and the FBI, are those folks um, lending a hand? Are they interested in helping some of the, the CIA, I'd say the momentum that CIA is starting to create? Are you, can, you, can you get some uh, assistance from those folks, at least, um, you know, the I mean, speakers? And around, the, around the young professional topic, do you mean, workforce development? Yeah, and, and and knowledge sharing about the you know the importance. I think a lot of people don't know the, the some of the problems with our critical infrastructure. Just for example. So, for example, let me let me speak in two ways. Uh, first, on the young professionals. So, I actually spoke to the office of the director of national intelligence. I was a keynote speaker at their private sector partners meeting where I talked about the challenges associated with workforce development uh, yeah. in our industry, which are, which are not new, right? They're they're not yeah. distinct from other industries, and it's a war. What I like to say. Uh, unfortunately, is there's a war for talent going on. We're competing with other industries for yes. talent. And and I think government absolutely agrees. Government, when you look at the cybersecurity positions they have, there are thousands and thousands of positions, for example, that government agencies are trying to fill. So number one, they share the same problem, getting qualified individuals into the workforce. And with our converged environment that you've spoken about, we can work together and should work together. And I've started that through s &T. But in terms of best practices, in terms of, for example, the Interagency Security Committee, which sets the security requirements for federal agencies, we're working with them. We have great relationships there to share their guidance. And Andrew, we do that on a uh, vertical by vertical basis. Okay. So wow. not just the government, but we work with associations and organizations that represent bus systems, for example, or ports, or as I mentioned, K through 12 schools through our PASS Partner Alliance for Safer Schools guidelines. The sharing of information around best practices is really critical. And, and one other thing that we're working on is um, a concept called Good, Better, Best, which we're actually going to be providing recommendations to integrators about the level of investment they should have in security technology to achieve a certain level of security. But look for more information about that as well. That's awesome. Don, uh, we're about out of time. I, I really appreciate you sharing your insights today with us and giving us sort of that insider perspective of what's going on with the industry. Um, I'm going to ping you again, maybe Q4, maybe Q1. Uh, try to try to try to keep sharing some of these insights because it's um, it, there's a lot going on that people don't know. So we really appreciate you sharing today. No, Andrew, it's no. I really appreciate the chance to be on. You know a lot of people, so there's a lot of people you could have asked to to be a guest today. It's really important, and I'm really sincere about one thing. You and Christine run an incredible company. And as you know, we put Christine on the cover of our annual report because we're proud of your company. And, and thank you for being a member. It means a lot to us. And thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Don. We'll see you soon. And folks, check out, check out the Security Industry Association if you want to get engaged with our, with our business. It's important because security matters. Thank you. Yep.